Theragnostics has a role in precision medicine. Uh, we do have, when you're building agents, which are both diagnostic and therapeutic, to have an agent that does both absolutely has merit. Um, it may not replace standard of care imaging for the diagnosis, but then it could come or play its part in the therapy of a cancer. We have an example which is an HSP90 inhibitor compound that is used both for diagnosis and for therapy. It's an identical compound. So we can take a patient, inject with this compound, we can show that it's taken up by the tumour, so we know there's going to be a therapeutic response, then we can give a therapeutic level of this compound and hopefully see a response in the patient. I mean, a number of trials have just basically failed because they've been giving a drug that has no uptake in their disease. But if you can combine a diagnostic to show the target or the receptor or the antigen is present for this therapy, then you're absolutely going to improve outcomes. And you can do that on an individual patient basis for the first time. Theragnostics is a combination of using a probe in a diagnostic and therapeutic fashion to investigate some specific clinical or biologically relevant questions for our patients. Nanomedicine and theragnostics are interdisciplinary. It's very exciting to work in these areas, as everybody will attest to, simply because you're taking all of the science that you've picked up over the years and you're trying to combine it together to make a better product for an improved outcome. Nanotechnology has very much been the basic science level at this point. Engineers, um, chemists building these small particles and trying to decide what to do with them. So what we decided was nanoparticles here at MSK really gives us the opportunity to, to do things that haven't been done in our patients before. But what we have the ability to do is translate and to get these into patients. We have a first-in-class nanoparticle platform that is currently being used in patients for staging lymph nodes. This isn't something that we necessarily made here, but we've collaborated with places on the outside and we've taken their platforms into patients here to answer specific questions. The nanoparticles that uh, I'm working with um, in conjunction with my, with, uh, my collaborator, uh, these particles were designed to address a specific question. So not, depending on what you're trying to answer, you tailor the nanoparticle for that. You know, you could put therapeutic radio labels on the surface of a particle. So there are many diverse ways to, to create these types of products and the compositions enhance, again, they boost the properties. So you can change the coatings to do this. And again, you can change the surface targeting moieties, whether they're antibody fragments because you want to keep a particle small or peptides or uh, drugs or some combination to have a theranostic. It's, it's wide open for that. It's really flexible. I think once you get the chemistry right and you understand what needs to be done, you could put any number of things on the surface. They are, have a long history also as therapeutic agents, for example, to uh, deliver um, antibiotics, antifungal agents, or anti -chemo or chemotherapy. Uh, liposomes have been used for a long time, so we're looking at that and there are all kinds of different nanoparticles we're looking at. What we are also looking at is the interaction of radioactivity with nanoparticles coming from the Cherenkov imaging where you can use the radioactivity and the Cherenkov to activate and uh, excite fluorescent nanoparticles, but we find that there are many more interactions actually happening. So we are looking a little bit at the physical interaction of radiation and nanoparticles and what is happening to, radio uh, to nanoparticles when they are exposed to radio, uh, radioactive uh, agents. So I've, I've had a lot of experience working with nanoparticles specifically when it comes to surface enhanced Raman. So Raman imaging is a new molecular imaging modality that's based on the Raman effect which was discovered a long time ago, the Raman effect itself. The Raman effect itself is a special way of light scattering that is fundamentally different from what we knew before. So instead of a photon hitting an atomic bond and just being scattered without changing its wavelength, it actually causes a transfer of energy with, between the photon and the atomic bond of the molecule, and that causes a change in the wavelength of the emitted photon. And that is the principle and the underlying uh, fundamental principle of this technique. So the main uh, applications that we envision for Raman uh, imaging is, first of all, open surgeries, where Raman imaging can guide the surgeon to perform high-precision tumor resections, including resecting precisely the infiltrating 
tumor margins, the microscopic micrometastases that may be present. Second of all, endoscopic applications where we could screen for cancers via upper or lower endoscopy without any real invasion. And third of all, robotically assisted or endoscopically assisted minimally invasive surgeries where we just need ports to guide the surgeon and show them exactly where the tumor is so they can precisely remove it or destroy it perhaps with other theranostic abilities of the nanoparticles such as photothermal ablation. Not all nanoparticles are the same, they're totally different and that goes into a totally different pharmacokinetics. So the size determines whether they're excreted renally or via the liver, not only the size though. Um, the size determines their circulation time in blood. If they're very small, they're excriminated uh, very quickly. If they're larger, they tend to circulate longer than they become larger. Some of them are again eliminated more quickly. The charge of the particles determines where they're ending up. Um, the surface coating determines where they're ending up. Even the shape of the particles determines where they're ending up. There were studies, not by us, uh, which shows that if you've got rod-like nanoparticles, which tend to mimic certain bacteria, they enter cells much more rapidly than other particles. MINT stands for Molecular Imaging in Nanotechnology and Theranostics. The reason to create MINT was that we felt there was a lack of coherency between many, many groups that may be working on nanoparticle imaging agents and others that are working on theranostic imaging agents and that there was no common group and no common forum for, for all these labs. It deals with everything nanoparticle related in molecular imaging. It's a very broad, broad interest group. So chances are you are already a member. And uh, also in addition to this, it, uh, the interest group um, deals with uh, theranostic agents, agents that provide therapy and diagnosis at the same time. So there are three top goals that we want to achieve with uh, MINT in the next five years. The first goal is to facilitate standardization. Currently, many groups are working on nanoparticles, for example, but nanoparticles, as you know, may consist of completely different materials. They may have completely different sizes. They may have completely different abilities. And the problem right now is that when you look at the literature, it's very hard to compare one nanoconstruct to the other because most often people don't use the same modalities to characterize them. The second main goal is to bring the expertise together and initiate a dialogue uh, between those very diverse groups, um, again for the purpose of learning from each other. And the third one is clinical translation. It would be very helpful if we had a better consensus on how to translate imaging probes in general, but in particular uh, nanoconstructs, which are more challenging to translate. If it is, if there's a blue, if there would be a blueprint for people, what they need to do, what experiments they need to do to follow, in order to get INDs uh, compiled, all of these things. Um, are crucial for clinical translation and clinical translation is the biggest hurdle for nanoconstructs at the moment.